Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is infratemporal space infection. Now let's see the gist of the infratemporal space infection. The first one will be boundaries of infratemporal space and then the contents of infratemporal space. Next one will be the teeth involved in the intratemporal space infection and what are the neighboring spaces of infratemporal space infection? Then the source of infection of infratemporal space infection. And the clinical features of infratemporal space infection. And finally will be the treatment of infratemporal space infection. All these headings are common for all the space infections. You just have to remember this. Okay now, let's move on to the topic. What is infratemporal space infection? As we know, it is one of the masticatory spaces, right? Yeah, it is one of the masticatory spaces. Now, let's see the boundaries of the infratemporal space. And also, the infratemporal space is also called as the retrozygomatic space. Okay? It is also called as the retrozygomatic space as it is partly situated behind the zygomatic bone. And so it is called as retrozygomatic space. Infratemporal space. It is also called as retrozygomatic space space as it is partly situated behind the where zygomatic bone that's why it is known as retrozygomatic space okay now let's see the boundaries of infratemporal space i have drawn the same diagram which we have saw for the temporal space and masticatory spaces so that it will be easy for you the same diagram with that you can write the superficial temporal and deep temporal and infratemporal then pterygomandibular space okay the same diagram if you practice it will be easy for you now let's move on to the boundaries where is this infratemporal space this will be your infratemporal space right this is your infratemporal space all right and as we know, this is spinoid bone. Okay, spinoid bone. And this will be your lateral pterygoid. And here will be your lateral pterygoid plate. This is lateral pterygoid muscle. And this muscle rises from the lateral pterygoid plate. So, here will be your lateral pterygoid plate. Alright. And this will be your medial pterygoid. Okay, medial pterygoid muscle and this is your masseter muscle. Okay, this will be your temporalis muscle. This will be your temporalis muscle. Okay, where is the infratemporal space? Here is your infratemporal space. Now let's see what is present superiorly. Okay. What you can find superiorly? Superiorly will be your skull base sphenoid. Okay. Superiorly will be your skull base that is sphenoid crest. Okay. You remember? Yes, S. That will be your sphenoid skull base. This one. And what you have inferiorly. Alright. What you have inferiorly. Inferiorly you will have lateral pterygoid muscle. This one. Superiorly you have the sphenoid crest. And inferiorly you will be having the lateral pterygoid muscle. Okay. This is inferior side. Inferiorly, you will have lateral pterygoid muscle. Now, what you have medially, 
medially as i've already said this lateral pterygoid muscle rises from the lateral pterygoid plate so infratemporal space medially you'll be having the lateral pterygoid plate be careful inferiorly you have the lateral pterygoid muscle and medially you'll be having the lateral pterygoid plate don't just confuse with this and what do you have laterally laterally you have the temporalis muscle and tendon that is temporalis muscle you have temporalis muscle and tendon okay this is present laterally now what do you have anteriorly what do you have anteriorly you know here will be the maxillary tuberosity right maxillary tuberosity and posteriorly obviously you know there will be mandibular condyle okay there will be mandibular condyle let's see again superiorly you will be having the sphenoid crest skull base and inferiorly you will be having the lateral pterygoid muscle and medially you will be having the lateral pterygoid plate laterally you will be having the temporalis muscle and tendon anteriorly you will be having maxillary tuberosity and posteriorly will be your mandibular condyle these are the boundaries of infratemporal space okay now coming to the contents of the infratemporal space you just remembered you have one maxilla one mandible and then you have to write about two pterygoid those are the contents you just remember like that one maxilla one mandible and two pterygoids you have to write that is first one will be your internal maxillary artery internal maxillary artery and what do you have the second one maxilla and then second one will be your mandible right second content is mandibular division of trigeminal nerve mandibular division of trigeminal nerve and third one you have to write two pterygoids right that is will be your medial and lateral pterygoid muscles and then will be your pterygoid venous plexus okay these are the contents of infratemporal space that is one maxilla one mandible and two pterygoids you have to write that is your internal maxillary artery mandibular division of trigeminal nerve medial and lateral pterygoid muscle pterygoid venous plexus that's all about the contents of infratemporal space now let's move on to the neighboring space what are the neighboring spaces you just have to remember that diagram that will be your deep temporal okay and then superficial temporal and then will be your pterygomandibular and so on you can write those neighboring spaces what will be your neighboring space that is will be your deep temporal that is here and superficial temporal this space and pterygomandibular space this one okay these are the neighboring spaces found and also you can write the submesiatic space here it will be these are the neighboring spaces of infratemporal space now what are the teeth involved in this infection that will be your maxillary second molar okay maxillary second molar and also your 
third molar. Okay, maybe the buccal roots may be involved. That is the deep involved in this space infection. Now let's move on to the source of infection. Source of infection. What are the causes? It may be due to first one. Maybe due to the infection from molar teeth. All right. And second one will be the infection from the other spaces. That will be your terigo mandibular or mastic space. Okay. And then. The infection due to the contaminated needles. These are the source of infection of infratemporal space infection. Now let's see what are the clinical features of infratemporal space infection. First one. You have extra orally clinical features and intraoral clinical features also. Extra oral features it include first one will be your trismus, the common clinical feature for all space infection, and second one will be your there is pain, okay, and there will be bulging of. Temporalis muscle. There will be bulging of temporalis muscle, and then there will be swelling, swelling of face on affected side. Swelling of face on affected side in front of the ear. Let's see the intraoral clinical features. Intraorally, you have okay. intraorally there will be swelling in tuberosity region. Swelling in tuberosity area. That is intraorally. These are the clinical features. Extraorally and intraoral clinical features. All right. Now, what is the treatment of infratemporal space infection? You have intraoral approach and extraoral approach. That is the incision and drainage. Again, the most common treatment. Intraorally. If you don't have trismus, that is if there is no trismus, then it can be done opposite to second molar opposite to second molar and third molar okay if there is no trismus then we can do intraoral approach and extraoral approach extraorally if it is severe case, okay, if there is trismus and if it is a severe case, then you have to do incision. Where the incision should be done? It should be made at upper and posterior, okay, upper and posterior edge of temporalis muscle. This is the extra oral approach. After that, sinus forceps directed. Okay. Sinus forceps is directed upwards and medially. And if there is failure in mouth opening. Okay, if there is failure in mouth opening, then you have to do temporalis myotomy or excision of coronoid process.
intraorally if there is no trismus then you can do opposite to the second and third molar extraorally suppose in severe case the incision is made at upper posterior edge of temporalis muscle after that sinus forceps is directed upwards and medially and then the drained in suture and if there is the failure in mouth opening then you have to do temporalis myotomy or excision of coronoid process that's all the treatment of infratemporal space infection these are the things we we have covered in this video about the infratemporal space infection that's it for today's video if you like the video hit the like button share the video and subscribe my channel if you have any queries leave in the comment section below thank you for watching thank you